The prevailing hypothesis for why trigger points form and why they are so difficult to treat is the energy crisis hypothesis. And once you understand this concept, you'll start to see why trigger point treatment must include a multimodal approach. The following is from a recent talk that I gave explaining what trigger points are and what the energy crisis hypothesis is. And we're going to first start with what are trigger points? So the definition offered by Travell and Simons from the trigger point manual, a trigger point is a hyper irritable spot in a taut band of a skeletal muscle that is painful on compression, stretch, overload, or contraction of the tissue. It can cause referred pain that is perceived distant from the spot. And so for anyone who's ever gotten a massage before or seen a physical therapist and told your muscles are really tight or are all knotted up, they are referring to the fact that you have a bunch of trigger points in your muscle. So what causes trigger points? Well, trauma or injury can definitely do it. We see this all the time after whiplash injuries and motor vehicle accidents. People tend to get persistent neck pain due to trigger points in their upper trapezius and their levator scapula. But most people who have trigger point pain actually have no history of injury and no history of trauma. And that's because when you look at the most common causes of trigger points, many of them are caused by repetitive use or chronic overloading conditions. And these include poor posture, repetitive movements, chronic tension, and a sedentary lifestyle. And the reason for this is because one possible mechanism for the formation of trigger points is due to the energy crisis hypothesis. So the theory goes, when you have low level muscle contractions due to repetitive use, this results in a decrease in intramuscular perfusion and repetitive low level contraction results in local ischemia, hypoxia, and insufficient ATP synthesis. This leads to increasing acidity and calcium accumulation, and that results in subsequent sarcomere contracture. And it's this sustained sarcomere contracture due to loss of ATP that contributes to intramuscular ischemia and tissue hypoxia, with the end result being a vicious cycle of myofascial trigger point pain. So to put that in more simple terms, when you have a trigger point, it clamps down on surrounding blood vessels. This results in decreased blood flow, decreased perfusion, which results in an imbalance of nutrients, specifically ATP. And we all know what rigor mortis is, right? When you don't have enough ATP, your actin cannot decouple from myosin, and therefore you have a tight muscle. So the imbalance in ATP results in progressive muscle tightening, which causes even more restriction in blood flow, which results in even less ATP, which results in more muscle tightening. And round and round we go through this trigger point pain cycle. 